Hey, good morning everybody. Uh, here at Blue Glow Electronics today we're going to uh, show you how to repair um, one aspect of a TV7 tube tester. Taking just a little bit of a break from my video series right now to do a couple customer repairs I'm trying to fit through the door that I've been promising for a while. But I promise I'll get right back to the um, console amp uh, build, maybe even later today. And um, I'm still waiting on my chassis from the powder coaters. He had told me it'd be ready Friday, but uh, didn't get it done for the single-ended amplifier, but any rate, um, we've got a TV7 here. This is a BU unit, and um, looks like at some point in time it had been maintenance by uh, Roger Kenny at AllTubeTesters.com, and it had been calibrated back on uh, 10 to 11. Well, I think the guy did a great job on it, by the way, uh, and actually replaced the meter here as well, but um, this thing had been put in storage uh, while someone was moving and it took a great fall um, you know, which has caused which caused a couple issues with it and I'm going to show you what those issues are one of which is a pretty common issue on the uh, the TV7 so I'd like for you to understand that uh, if you don't fix that then you'll never get one of these calibrated properly okay the guy said that um, after the fall um, he had taken it apart and the 83 tube here inside of it um, was busted and so you know for a unit to um, bust a tube inside of it even though the tubes were locked down and whatnot this thing had taken a pretty hard fall but he put a, a different 83 in it and uh, even though it seems like it's got a little gas on this one it, it actually doesn't it tests quite well I think it's just the uh, kind of how the getter flash did on this one but um, Tube test's good, um, and I'll show you what I was originally finding when I powered the thing up uh, after he sent it to me. So basically with the unit turned on um, when he first sent it to me, you could hit the line test button here, and no matter how far you turn the line adjust button, it wouldn't move above about uh, 10 on the meter scale here. So you couldn't, you could never get it to, um, you know, the line adjust. And because of that, the, uh, the, you know, the tester certainly wasn't, wasn't uh, able to be calibrated or working properly. And the way these things work, and it's one of the first steps you have to do when calibrating one of them, is you have to get this line set um, proper. Um, basically, when you push this line adjust button, and I'll see if I can throw a schematic up right here, um, it puts in play a little meter measurement circuit that basically measures the voltage here, um, your AC voltage, and it um, kind of lines that thing up to the very center um, at a certain point. So um, the fact I couldn't get the thing to move at all um, was causing an issue, and I'll flip it over and show you what was causing that. Okay, so you can see where it's at. I'm down on the uh, right-hand side of the tube tester here where all the push button switches are, and by the way, this very bottom one I'm pushing right here is the line set um, button. But I'm going to zoom in on this part here, Let's see if you can see it. Right, let me get my little indicator. Right here, this little gray part right here. This is known as CR101, and you can actually see it kind of uh, if you zoom out a little bit, it's marked right here on the chassis. It says ZR1, CR101 right here. But what this is, is it's a little metal package that contains um, two copper oxide um, diodes inside of it, which, which are kind of a rare bird. You don't see copper oxide diodes used much at all. At any rate, the entire center section of this uh, CR202 had popped out. Um, so the diode wasn't working at all. Actually works, and with the center popped out of it, it didn't work at all. So I kind of put the center back into it, and same things seemed to work at that point. So I put a little bit of epoxy on it, or I would pop it back out right now. And um, things seemed from the surface to work at that point in time, but in actuality, let me show you what I'm what I'm testing and why I'm saying this thing needs to be replaced. Okay, if you'll notice what I've done here, I've put an octal um, socket, um, test socket in. So what it is, it's, it's just a little replacement socket that feeds straight through and you could actually plug a, uh, you know, a 6L6 tube straight into that thing right now. Um, 
but what it has is it has little pins coming out of it that you can actually measure each tube pin and I'm measuring from pin 2 to pin 7 right now which is actually the um, um, the filament voltage on this octal tube right and the way this thing should work um, I've got it set on the 10 volt scale right now so I probably shouldn't plug in a 6v6 right now um, but what I want to do is I want to turn this thing up till it's just a little over 10 volts um, here on the AC scale you can see in the background here and I'm going to get it up to and typically you want to leave this thing on for a while 30 minutes or so just to let it everything warm up quite well which I'm going to pause the video here in a minute and let it warm up a good bit but you're going to want to get this thing slightly over 10 volt like between 10.05 and 10.10, 10.10.1, 10 10.05 10 and 10.1. So I'm going to back it down just a hair, somewhere in this, uh, eh, get it there. It's tough. I need to let this thing warm up a little bit, but right in there in that 10.06 range. And then what you ultimately end up doing is you come over here. Uh, and you depress this line adjust and what you're trying to get is this thing to the very center at that point with that 10.05 volts over there you need this line test to be on center and the way you do that is on the back of this thing and uh, these things are a lot of fun to work on because you have to actually adjust this stuff while this thing's on and uh, there's a lot of voltage <laughs> running around in here but this right here is R134 and that's what you want to try to adjust to get that um, so you have to first loosen the little uh, lock nut on the outer part of this and then you're going to want to adjust this thing um, typically turn it to the right if you need to go up um, and get this thing all the way up on 60 at that point well guess what this thing will not get to 60 even if I take this potentiometer and I turn it all the way to the right as far as it'll go so that it's pegged out on one side and I flip this back over at this point um, it just won't go there um, matter of fact when I peg it all the way over it I must have a bad spot in it right there um, but you can see I can get it up to uh, 58 and a half. I cannot get it all the way to 60. And that's because that uh, copper oxide um, diode set there that we that we showed earlier, remember it's right down in here, has gone bad. Um, even though it's, it's partially working, not completely working. And I've seen those things go out before. So, um, you know, one of the other more common uh, issues with the TV7, and just in case you're wondering, you can see one of them right down in here there's some little 47 ohm resistors right here that kind of feed on the uh, plate uh, screen and grid um, adjustments here uh, these things open up and uh, so there's some on the, each side of those things so if you're having a problem getting your unit calibrated that's something else to check but um, those are two very common TV7 issues Okay, all I've done here is taken some uh, 1N4007s, 4005, they would all work. And as you can see here, I've kind of soldered two of them in series with each other. Um, so, you know, if I go in here now, and, uh, oops, wrong way. You can see here on the, the um, tester, if I go in here and test with my diode tester here, I've got a uh, 0.523 voltage drop across that one and a 545 across that one across both of them a little over one volt and if I go the other way open link open link so anytime I solder something into a little base like this I like to uh, just like to test it out make sure it's good uh, assume my, don't always assume your own soldering is good Okay, I've, I've snipped off the black, red, and yellow wires uh, from that little CR101 at this point. And now, as you can see, I've came along and used a uh, set of wire strippers here and stripped the wires off the three ends of those. 
Up next, just using a little nut driver, I'm going to take this off, the nut off the end of this thing, and take this entire little uh, CR101 out. Okay, three more little maneuvers here that you're going to want to make to get this thing in there properly. The first one would be, you're going to want to loosen this nut here, or screw here on the end of this uh, kind of stack resistor set. And you're going to want to take this resistor and kind of spin it to the right because it, it has a, a lead to it that you need to get down to the right out of the way. Next up, you're going to take the tab on this uh, three lug little strip here and you're going to bend it completely straight like I did here. Um, and third, you're actually going to want to leave this whole unit in here because the center rod for it is what you're going to want to bolt on to here. But as you can see, um, that thing will bolt right there perfectly just like that. Let me get the nut on there. Okay, I'm going a little bit freehand. You can see here why I spun this. You see these two little lugs right here? I had to get them turned. They were sticking straight up here and one of them would have touched this tab. So I just loosen this and turn that a little bit to the right and then tighten it back up. You can see here how I've connected uh, back to the original lug and how this thing now is just kind of held on here nice and firm. I just need to snug that up a little bit. And then it's just a matter of, uh, I'll show you how to wire up these, uh, these three wires to this. Okay, sorry for the hand movements here, but the way this thing solders up is the red goes down on the cathode and um, the yellow goes in the middle of the two and then the black goes down here on the anode end. And I, I tried to draw it out here in a little picture, but um, so you've got the, uh, the cathode end here with the red, uh, the yellow here in the middle, and then you've got the black here on one end. And if you don't know which ends, the cathode and an anode on a diode, the end with the stripe or the, uh, the negative end is the cathode and the, uh, the end without is the positive end um, of a diode. So you can see it here, stripe on that end of the diode, um, red, yellow in the middle, uh, no stripe on this end, uh, that's where the black goes. And now you can see 10.0, uh, oh, wherever I want it, 10.07 there. Much easier to adjust out. Uh, things seems to be much more stable now. And if I hit line adjust over here, as you can see, I've been able to adjust the potentiometer to get right on 60. So uh, now at this point you can actually calibrate one of these things and uh, that's a pretty in-depth video I hope to do one day, but uh, not for today. I just want to get this thing up and working for this individual and uh, kind of take it from there. But that's how you replace CR101 if you ever have one of these go out in your unit. I am actually going through the uh, calibration process right now, but one thing I did want to point out, um, reading a little bit online and found out that uh, some people are having to put a dropping resistor across these. One guy had used an 8.6K ohm, uh, kind of from one end to the other here on this new little uh, bridge that we built. Um, if, if you can't get this in line, and it, and it might have to do with the uh, voltage drop across the diodes that are actually used. I think he was using some 914s or some small signal diodes or something. But this with the uh, um, uh, 4007 seemed to work fine just the way they are. And I've, I've fixed this same thing. This will be the third time I've ever ran across this. So I think this should do it for you. Um, stay tuned and uh, maybe one day down the road I'll make a video on how to calibrate these. There's just a lot of guys out there right now kind of uh, making their livelihood off of calibrations and uh, um, part of the problem is it's a pretty long in-depth process. It's, uh, I'm a little hesitant honestly to make a video on it because um, you know, it kind of undercuts a lot of the people that that's what they're doing uh, for a uh, for their livelihood. But we'll see. And we're just doing our final calibration steps. Uh, we've got everything spot on. You have to mul calibrate multiple ranges on these things. And uh, so it takes uh, at least three different tubes uh, to do that with. And so you need a good uh, set of calibration tubes if you're going to do any calibration, which is part of why I don't been hesitant on making the video because uh, then people would need those but uh, as you can see now it has been calibrated and uh, we're going to get this thing back to the customer. 
Before I close this video out, I wanted to just talk about a couple more things. This is uh, from a service manual for a TV7. This is actually the little uh, bridge circuit here that um, we, we've been talking about for the meter circuit. And this thing is only in play when you press the line test button. But you can see down here at the bottom, these two little diodes in a package are actually CR101. Um, and if you notice up here, R134 um, that you see right here is uh, what we've been adjusting to get this uh, line voltage where we wanted it. And if you'll notice, there's a note down here. It says, um, uh, variable resistor R134 is only used on the TV7BU and DU. On the others, that is a, just a fixed resistor. So you either have to add a potentiometer in or uh, play around with some fixed resistors of your own. Luckily, this was a BU unit, which makes it uh, a little easier to service. The Bs and the Ds are the easiest to service out of the group. But, um, so just showed you that. And then the other thing I want to mention, this is not the only reason that your line set uh, function may not be working right. There's two kind of other common things that you see. First and foremost, the meter itself is bad. Um, and you can get a 1.5 volt battery and put in uh, parallel, I mean in series with it, a little uh, potentiometer, like a 10K potentiometer, and apply some voltage straight across the leads on the... Uh, on the meter and make sure that it goes to full deflection. If you have a meter that won't do full deflection with about a volt on it or so, um, that, that, that meter is no good. The second thing in parallel with the meter on these units is typically a bathtub capacitor and that thing is notorious for going bad. I typically pull those off and replace those with a uh, just standard electrolytic type capacitor in its place. So those are two other common things that could cause a line issue. I didn't want to. I didn't want to uh, insinuate this is the only thing that would cause it, but this is what I definitely found today. And I'll tell you, this was a tricky one. It took a while to find that that, that uh, R134 had actually popped open, um, and because uh, you know you have to dig in there pretty physically deep to figure that out. At any rate, uh, this thing's fixed, boxed up, uh, and uh, customers got a note. It'll head back to them hopefully this week. Thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, stay tuned. We got a couple more phone ones coming.